Griffin Memphis full full highlights. Let's see. Seasons. Your officials for tonight: Bart Lennox, right, Selton Steed. This is, and this is my this is my official uh, draft analysis. I will give you my full analysis of uh of the the prospect at hand right now. Keith Patterson quickly inside the Wiseman for the first bucket of the season. Early on, South Carolina. Not impressed at all. In fact, I'm actually disappointed. Seasons. Your officials for tonight, Bart Lennox, Zelton Steed, and Keith Patterson. Quickly inside the Wiseman for the first bucket of the season. Early on, South Carolina. Tigers break it easily. Boogie Ellis for three. James Wiseman. Nobody boxed him out, and Wiseman with the emphatic finish. This is not happening in the NBA, bro. W. There's not going to be five. There's not going to be six foot one guys standing around here. This is not happening in the NBA. Just saying, dude. To be a leader, even if he's not on the floor that much. You mentioned Mike Norvell. He'll be with us at, at halftime. What a week it has been for Mike Norvell, the football pro, and the city of Memphis in general. Actually, he's going to join us during the first That's half right. action. There you go. Now the James Wiseman. Well done by Alex Lomax. How tall is he? How tall is he? How am I hating? Dude, chat, chat. Chat, you got to stop saying everything is hating, bro. I said that in the NBA, he's not going to be wide open under the rim with with six foot one guys. You just get a real quick glimpse into the problems that James Wiseman creates for you. Getting very impressed with South Carolina State uh, in, so far in this game. Lomax for Wiseman. No, he got it back. He makes the bucket and draws the foul. He's just too big right now for South Carolina State. James Wiseman making his presence felt in his first collegiate game. He has eight points and will go to the free throw line to try to make it not. Uh, you know, the city showed up at such an incredible level there Saturday night and Saturday morning. Uh, you have seven hours of national broadcast and it was all Tigers. Coach has so Wiseman, excuse me, John. Penny Hardaway is going to try to do. Coach, you always talk about the different phases of your game. I thought your special teams were absolutely outstanding Saturday night. Yeah, the, the special teams have played big. You know, right now we're ranked uh, first in the country and special teams. It's... I think it's important for... Um, I thought this was his full highlights. I thought that was his full highlights. Players like Anthony Edwards are why the NBA draft is so hard for teams to get right. Forget the pandemic. He would have been hard to evaluate in a normal year. Edwards has the talent to be the number one overall pick this year. No one would deny that. But he also did enough bad things in his one season at Georgia to raise real questions about his NBA future. Let's start with that talent. Anthony Edwards is an American actor and director known for his roles on ER and Top Gun. Oh, sorry. Wrong Wikipedia page. Space just show us the highlight. Ugh. Come on, bro. Like, bro, who, who? Call it spade a spade. Call it spade a spade. <laughs> The most notable thing about the other Anthony Edwards are his dimensions. 6'5 and 225 pounds with a 6'9 wingspan. You don't see that on a basketball court very often. Guys, you're going to kill another joke. You're going to kill another joke. You're going to kill another joke, and it's going to piss me off and everyone else. Shut the fuck up. This SS, you're literally ruining it. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you ahead of time, you're already ruining it. You're ruining it. You're ruining it. You're literally ruining it. 117 players who appeared in an NBA game last season who were 6'5 and shorter. Only seven weighed more than 225 pounds. The two you know about are P.J. Tucker, 6'5", 245, and Malcolm Brogdon, 6'5", 229. Now imagine if Tucker or Brogdon had a 42-inch vertical. That frame makes it very easy for Edwards to create space off the dribble. And look what he can do with that space. That's what we do all day long, I promise you. He's a freight train with the burst and handle of a sports car. Don't be fooled by his nickname, Ant-Man. That's just a play on his first name. If he were a Marvel character, he'd be more like the Hulk. 
but he's not just an incredible athlete. You have to be able to shoot to succeed in the modern NBA. Edwards can do that too. His poor three-point percentage at Georgia doesn't tell the whole story. The more telling numbers are his free throw shooting and three-point attempts, 7.7 .7 per game. His so he shot almost eight threes a game and shot under 30%. Um, That's fucking bad, bro. That's fucking bad. But maybe he's got an explanation for this. That's not good at all. History has shown that those are stronger indicators of a player's ability to shoot NBA threes than his college percentages behind a shorter three-point line. It makes sense when you think about it. A free throw is an uncontested standstill shot. How can you make threes if you can't make those? That was the red flag for Markel Fultz and Lonzo Ball, both of whom shot 41% from three in college, but less than 70% from the free throw line. The number of attempted threes is critical too. Justice Winslow and Josh Jackson have both been bad shooters in the NBA, despite shooting well from three in college. But that doesn't mean much when they only combined for 200 total attempts. Edwards shot 245 by himself. You don't take that many threes in one season without a decent jumper. You hear the phrase, he's gonna be a problem a lot online. Edwards one is- to nine. Chat, chat, why are you just repeating the same joke? You're repeating it. One for nine? It's not even a real, it's not even a real stat. Is actually a problem. How do you guard a freak athlete with a projectable jumper? You don't. You just hope he misses. That's how Edwards scored 37 against Michigan State, 36 against South Carolina, and 32 against Florida, and how he led the SEC in scoring as a freshman at 19.1 points per game. But he has problems in addition to being a problem. The biggest is that Georgia went 16 and 16 and had a 5 and 13 record in SEC play. If there had been an NCAA tournament, they wouldn't have even been in it. A player as good as Edwards should have been able to win games by himself in college. So what happened? Yeah, come on, whoever did this, just confess. We promise we won't be mad. Problem one, the type of shots he was taking. Just because you can make step back threes doesn't mean that you should take them. Edwards is not James Harden. That's one of the reasons he shot under 30% from three. There were a lot of possessions where he wasn't reading how a defense was guarding him. He just felt like shooting, so he did. Problem two, his coach was Tom Crean, who you might remember from the memes or because he's married to a Harbaugh sister. But Crean sold Edwards and coming to Georgia, not exactly a basketball hotbed, partly because he developed and coached Dwayne Wade and Victor Oladipo in college. Both are combo guards who combine scoring and passing ability. Edwards was supposed to do the same, but he only averaged 2.8 assists on 2.7 turnovers per game in college. That's a ratio of one to one. Point guards should be at oh least- Oh my, dude, this is all, this guy is one of the best in the draft? This has to be a weak draft, bro. If this dude is like one of the best, he's going top three, bro. His stats are fucking horrible. He shot under 30%. He averaged 2.8 assists, 2.7 turnovers. Yeah, this, this draft class is looking weak, bro. It's two to one, if not three to one. Crean eventually moved Edwards to shooting guard, but not before a lot of losing happened first. And there was his defense. All the physical tools in the world don't matter when you aren't paying attention or giving your best effort. Georgia went from a defensive rating of 110.1 with Edwards on the floor to 103 with him off. Bro, love Lulu. You a casual too. what the hell am I even watching? Everything he's saying is just bad. Like, what is good about this guy? He takes bad shots. He attempts eight threes a game and makes less than 30%. And he can't play defense. Uh, I'm waiting for him to be like, but... And then show me like, oh, like, fucking, you know, Harden was uh had the same stats or something and now looking at like i don't know i'm waiting for the butt here like I, I don't is it coming i don't know like look at the difference between his on off numbers and those of his teammates 
He almost single-handedly sunk the Bulldogs' defense. You know who else took bad shots and didn't pass or play defense in college? Andrew Wiggins. He was a top pick in 2014 because he was an all-world athlete with a decent jumper. It's 2020 and that's still all he is. You can't just assume a player is going to develop because he's a great athlete. But that's not the whole story in Edwards either. There's some important context still missing. For starters, 16 and 16. Bro, when your draft comparison is Andrew Wiggins, dude. You're fucked. You're fucked. Isn't a bad season at Georgia. They went 11 and 21 the season before. Crean's first in Athens. He had to rebuild the program from the ground up. The school has almost no basketball tradition. They have won one NCAA tournament game in Edwards' entire life. Edwards is one of five freshmen in its rotation, but this is no Fab Five. He was the only one ranked in the top 50 of their high school class. You can win in college with either talent or experience. It's almost impossible to win without either. The Bulldogs finished 322 in the country in three-point percentage. Defenses could pack the paint against Edwards and double-team him with impunity. Will team him with impunity. He wasn't an unwilling passer either. His teammates just didn't convert many of them. He had 10 games with four or more assists in college and only five with one or none. Wiggins, in contrast, had five games with four or more assists in college and 21 with one or none. And that's while playing with Joel Embiid and four other future NBA players at Kansas. Edwards wasn't just being selfish when he was playing one on five. It was also Georgia's best chance of winning. They were six and three when he scored 24 points or more and 10 and 13 when he scored fewer. Nor see the first big time prospect to struggle with defensive effort on a bad college team. Just watch Ben Simmons to LSU. They missed the tourney and had the 228th ranked defense in his one season of college. And now he's first team all defense in the NBA. But that doesn't mean Edwards will develop like Simmons any more than he will like Wiggins. Every prospect is different. Every path is different. We were talking about 18 and 19 year old kids. Crean coached Wade and Oladipo for three seasons in college. He only coached Edwards for one. Edwards is really young, even for a one and done player. He turned 19 in August, making him the third youngest player in this draft. He's even a few months younger than Evan Mobley, one of the top prospects in next year's draft. And he's 15 months younger than fellow freshman Cole Anthony. That's a big difference. Edwards also has a different background than most other top prospects. Remember his unusual dimensions? The reason you don't see them in basketball very often is that most guys built like him end up playing football. Edwards was supposed to be a football star. Look at this Pop Warner highlight reel. He could have been the next Derrick Henry or Miles Garrett. He didn't focus full-time on basketball until he became a high school sophomore. We can focus on all the things he did wrong at Georgia, or we can talk about him being a high school aged kid, still learning the game on a bad call. Lowe's is supposed to be a sumo star. You're, that's a timeout, bro. Like, that's literally a timeout automatically.